Hey guys, this is Gaijin Hunter. The demo for Monster Hunter Stories just came out on the Japanese eShop. Unfortunately, we don't know if they're ever going to release this for the West. They haven't announced anything yet at this point, but let's go ahead and check out the Japanese one. In the demo, you have a choice between event quest or tournament. So in this video, we're going to be doing event, which is just a sample of kind of like the story and a quest and you bit to go and find eggs. So it's pretty much the core loop of the game minus all the cool game system stuff. In the final game, you get to customize your character quite a bit, um, but in the demo, they just have you using the two templates. So let's get started. It starts off with a movie. Now, I don't want to translate over all this because I want you guys to enjoy the performance. They aren't speaking in actual vocal Japanese. It's a brand new language that they created just for the game. That's kind of loosely based on Japanese, but not so much. Um, but basically, you'll be able to get the gist of what's going on. Basically, they're having a ceremony for a new rider who's going to give you the bonding stone and then you're going to use that to become a brand new rider to hatch your first egg and to set off an, an adventure with your first monster however you are going to run into Nabiru in the middle of it who we don't know anything about all we know is that it's a cute cat that happens to take a liking to the player and decides to tag along anyways it's a pretty cute cutscene even if you don't speak Japanese so I hope you guys enjoy it シャイルハイビ。ギチュアリハ。せんかきなしき。のはるごあまきう。
戦火キーナスティノッハー Okay, so we get to hatch our very first egg. Yay! So basically you just tap the egg or you jam on A and you'll hatch it. When you're tapping it, you'll see like these words come up. It's like attack plus one, HP plus five, just some random nice base stats that you can get. What do you think it is? Look at the color. I bet you it's a Velocidron. I swear, I don't know. This is the post audio, wait it is. Hey, it's a Velocidron, isn't it cute? Not really. <laughs> okay, now that we've got our pet Velocidron, we are going to go and set out on a quest. Okay, he's just saying, oh, how wonderful, how wonderful. You are now bonded to this monster. Take good care of it. And Nabidu's just being like, oh, that's so cool. So. So he, this guy here is just saying that, you know, in our uh, demo version, our quest is to take down a Kezu. But we need to train up. We just have a brand new, what they call Monsties. I think they're called Monsties. In the TGS English uh, sort of like demo slip uh, but anyways we need to train our monsters up to make them a little bit stronger so he's gonna send them out so our first quest is to go out and get two eggs now in the game when you're on a field there's all these like caverns and they're all randomly generated and if you go in those then you can find eggs so we're gonna go and go across a field go to any two that we want and see what it's like Just your basic UI telling you what to do. Hey, why don't you try doing a ride on? Press the Y button when you're near your monster to ride it, or press Y when you're far away to call it over. So I'll show you how that works. Okay, enough of that explanation. So we're gonna go ahead and run down here. You can see the game is just gorgeous. It runs in a pretty solid 60 frames per second, at least on the new 3DS. I have no idea how well it runs in the old one, but you can definitely play it on the old one. And then each, of course, monster has some special stuff. So anyways, let's just go through and look at all the options we have. We have our items. So we have herbs, which just heal by 30. A potion heals by 100. We have another item here, which cures one of our hearts. Three deaths and you're dead. It's sort of like the cart system. Uh, we have a anti-paralysis drink, um, some mite seeds, which powers you up for a turn. Um, all the items have been sort of reimagined for a turn-based battle. So it's like um, the whetstone here makes your next attack for the next turn have a 50% critical rate. Trap hole, if the opponent does a speed attack, they'll be stuck for two turns. Um, trap, uh, the shock trap is against a power attack. And then this new one, this other trap, is against technique uh, versions. And bombs do damage um, and last for three turns. And a bunch of other items. We're not going to go through every single one of these, but you get the idea. Okay, let's zip ahead. We have some equipment so we can check out our weapons. In Monster Hunter Stories, you have four types of weapons. You have a great sword, sword and shield, hammer, and hunting horn. I definitely like hunting horn, so I think I'm going to be using that for our demo playthrough, at least for this time. Um, you can see that they're using true attack, I think, because you get like attack 30, 3 element, 2 uh, affinity. Um, this has paralysis, 10%. Uh, and also the skill. As with all the other Monster Hunter games, the outfits are absolutely gorgeous. We have the Rider outfit, which is your traditional one. An Arzuros one, which is adorable. Uh, let's see here. It's just got the item descriptions, and it also comes with a skill. So I think that it, instead of having skilled talismans, it's just armor has natural skills that you might be able to buff up as you level them up. Like the Kutku has, it looks like something to do with fire. I don't know exactly what the skill does. It doesn't actually say. And also negate uh, burn. And then we have the Logombi outfit, which is great. This has like a uh, ice attack of medium and anti-cold, which is pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and pick the uh, Arzuros because I like the look of that. I've got... 
Okay, and the next one is accessories. This is kind of like a charm. Uh, you can actually find these by exploring the maps, which I did in my first playthrough, but I'm not going to do in this one. And this is just your battle set pouch. These are the items that you bring with you into each battle. Okay, they have a little section here where you can just read the quest description. You can see your status for your hunter. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Lots of stuff. And this is my Velocidrome. You can see it's bingo card on the right hand side. Um, it has a tendency towards doing speed attacks. So the more you know the monsters, the more you know that they're going to either tend to do speed type attacks, power type attacks, or technique. I would just say more like skills. Um, so if you go up against this one, it's sort of like a rock, paper, scissors type of mechanic. So it's pretty easy for kids to get, but there's enough customization here for, I think, adults to really get into it. There's even those like bingo boards where you can fuse monsters together to, for example, you can have an ice monster that can do like a fire breath attack and stuff like that. It's pretty nuts. Just looking at my hunting horn stuff here. Okay, that's all good. Okay, let's... Uh, let's see here, Rider knows. Okay, let's just go and play. So you see here, I can press B and I can jump with the Velocidrome. So there's going to be some areas in the game that you can't get up on normally unless you jump. So if you go and you change to this monster, you'll be able to jump up and access whatever that area may be. It's a traditional RPG, so if there is uh, monsters on the map, just run into them to start the battle. Here in the top, we have um, top left is skills. These is what I use, the gauge um, either for myself or for the monster to do special attacks. Middle one is just attack. The right hand side is skills for your hunter, so you can choose. Again, these take the gauge in the middle, which doesn't always charge up. It's only when you and your monster do kind of like combination attacks that you get some charge. Um, but the charge is very powerful, so you can do these really cool attacks, and you can do, of course, the ride on special if you fill up your gauge. We're definitely not going to fill it up here on a popo because it'll die before that. Um, but let's go ahead and hit fight. This is a popo, so it really doesn't matter what we do. Um, but generally, popos just charge forward, so they do a lot of power attacks. So if you know that, you can use speed and you can get the upper edge on them. If you get the upper edge, you can negate their attack and hit them first, um, which is really good. So the more you know your monsters, the better you're going to be at this game, which I do like. What a win! <laughs> Get some experience and some raw meat here. Nice, we can get some uh, popotan. Love it. Okay, let's switch out monsters to everybody's favorite, which is Narga Kuga. Just hit the bottom on the bottom right here. Switch over to a monster that you like. And boom, instant swap out. How do you like that? Nargakuga's special ability is if you press B, it'll go invisible for a few seconds. This allows you to, of course, run past monsters on the map or even get behind them and do kind of like a preempt attack on them, which is pretty cool. Now, Bidu here is just saying, hey, I see a cave, I smell eggs. So anytime you go into these little caves, there's an egg part at the end. Sometimes you have to fight a boss monster, sometimes you don't. Um, but this is where we need to go in the demo. So let's go ahead and... Uh I don't know, should we go in there or should we do a fight first? Let's do a fight. Nah, let's just go in. We'll see plenty of fights by the end of this demo. Okay, so this is the cave area. So there's lots of areas to gather items, which is really good. Obviously, you'll need items for um, upgrading your equipment, upgrading and buying new armor, and all sorts of other stuff as well. I do like that the motion that you do when you're riding on a monster for collecting is exactly the same monster. It's kind of like special for that monster. So Nagakuga has like a little bite uh, motion that it does and other monsters have other stuff. So let's go ahead and fight the little, it's not Zamtrios. What is this? There we go. Popo and Bullfango. <laughs> and we got them from back. Now if you notice, Nagakuga's already decided that it wants to use a power attack. I can join it and have the small chance of being able to do like a combination attack, which gives us gauge, or I can ignore him completely, do my own attack or choose my own type that I want to do depending on my target or if I just think that it's wrong. Um, it's definitely interesting that your monster has its own AI and reacts sort of in the way that the monster would react um, if it was really there in battle. So while you do control it as your pet, you don't fully control it. I think that was a really smart decision from a game design perspective. So there's no way I'm going to be able to pull off a song with my horn here. The monsters are going to die way too fast. 
There we go. Double speed. Double attack. That's so awesome. And if you notice, our gauge went up as well. But it doesn't really matter because we won the battle. And when you win a battle, your gauge gets completely depleted all over again. So pretty much use your gauge. If you have some juice, go ahead and do special attacks or go ahead and charge up for your special attack. Okay, let's go and find ourselves an egg, which is just in the back over here. Now, if you're really lucky in the demo when you play it, you might have a gold cave, and that's a rare one, and you might be able to get like a Tigrax. In those cases, the caves are much larger and have bigger monsters. Now, the bullfango here, we could have stepped around it, stole an egg, and ran away, but why don't we just battle it, right? Okay, for this hunt, I actually want to pull off a song on the hunting horn because I've never seen it done before. Um, so I'm going to do a specific combination here. It's Bullfango, so I know he's going to be powered because he likes to plow through. Nargakuga has screwed up and has chosen Technique. I have to do it because Technique is the first note in my song. Um, but you'll see here, if we're overwritten by the power of Bullfango, what really happens. They go at it, and boom, Bullfango wins and gets the attack. Now, granted, he does get damage as well as sort of like a counterattack, but he does get to deal a little bit more damage than just being hit. So there he goes. He's beating me again because I had to use uh, speed for mine. Nargakuga is using a ability that sharpens and gives him higher attack and higher affinity for his next turn. Now I'm going to complete the song with power. Schmack! And boom! I've got a song. So this beat forte. Schmack! Will now raise the power for my next few turns. Alright, we are up. I'm going to choose rest here just to see what it looks like. This is just kind of a way to heal some life. <laughs> That's too good. Okay, I know it goes for power, so we're both going for speed because we know how to sort of trump him. And there we go. No, oh, he... Oh, he's down, he's down. It's perfect time. So I'm going to go ahead and ride on Nargakuga since my gauge is all the way up. And at this point, you can attack or you can do a super. So you basically just always want to do your super. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So I'll shut up so you can see it and enjoy the show. Boom! And it dropped an item too. Is that freaking cool or what? It's so awesome. Yay! Fango's dead! Get our experience points, get some rank points, get some items. Okay, we are ready to go and grab an egg. So I'm going to press Y to hop on off. If you notice here, there's tons of really rare items that you can farm. So I got the blood crystal there. Nice. Okay, for the eggs, you only get three or four picks. But if you pick one up and you don't like what you see, you can go ahead and exchange it for another one. They don't actually tell you what's in them. But I think there's probably a pattern that you can probably recognize as you play the game. Okay, enough tutorials, enough hand-holding. Let's do this. Yeah, they're just warning you in these messages that sometimes the sort of like mother or protecting monster might come up. So it might have a battle, but who cares? Press the A button to grab an egg. Nubidoo will give little hints like I can't smell anything from it or it's very light, it's very heavy, blah, blah, blah. So again, these are just hints that I think will become more clear as we have the final game. So let's just go ahead and cycle through a bunch of these so you can see all the different types that you can get. I think that's a popo. I remember getting that egg before, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that. So all you have to do now is grab it and walk to the end of this area. Thank God they don't make you go all the way through the cave. At least I hope they don't in the final version of the game. <laughs> that would be a pain. So he's just asking if you're okay with leaving, so I'm gonna go ahead and press yes. And yay, it's gonna say that we have one egg. So now my challenge is to get a second one. 
Once you get the second egg, it automatically transitions to an event where you do your final boss battle. So if you want to explore this demo and try to find some cool things or level up, then you definitely want to do it before you find your second egg. Let's run around here and see what there is. Ooh, a Lagombi. I like that. Okay, let's just do a quick edit because I actually got in a fight with that little small monster and it was kind of boring to watch. And let's go fight the Lagombi. I want to make you my pet. Okay, for this one I'm going to use an item. I know that it probably is going to do speed attacks because it's Lagombi. So if I put a trap hole, it reacts to if they do a speed attack at me, it'll they'll get caught. Now watch this. Ah, I was too late. My hunter did not place it before Lagambi tried to do its thing. But we'll see. Maybe next turn, Lagambi will be stupid and try to do a speed attack again. Let's see here. I'm going to pick technique maybe? Yeah. Okay, so it's not going to do a... It's going to do a special attack, so it doesn't actually count. He's going to throw a snowball. Just love the animations. Everything looks so good. Oof. Come on, do a speed attack, you stupid bunny. I'm going to bait it. Let's just do technique, because that... Oh, there he goes. It's going to try a speed attack. Watch what happens. Nargus sharpening up. Good, good, good. There it goes. Ah, idiot. Yeah, I tried to do a speed attack, and so this type of trap will trap them for two turns if they try to do a speed attack. Go ahead and just wail on it here. Again, even if you pick the same one, sometimes you don't do that combo attack, which is fine. And what's another cool thing to mention is that you and your monster have a life gauge. And those three hearts, which are your three carts for sort of the whole entire quest, that's shared between the two of you. So if you die, you lose one. If it dies, you lose one. Then you immediately get regained uh, your health and everything, and you're back in the battle. Um, but you have a shared kind of cart system, which is good. Okay, let's move on here. Again, I'm just going to skip some of the battles and show you now off some of the cooler things that you can do. You have some hidden areas that are accessible by the water. If you have a Ludroth, you can go ahead and switch over and then boom, you can jump into the water and get around. So they're designing all the maps to have all these types of areas like vines that if you have a Konkalala you can get to. Um, islands that you can swim to and all sorts of other hidden stuff so lots of good reasons to go back to, I think to these maps and explore so very cool okay let's go in and get a second egg okay I've edited out a bunch of hunts because it wasn't necessary so we got our second egg let's go ahead and leave this place and it will transition us back into the village okay we left it said we've got our two eggs we've cleared our quest so we are now back in the village Unfortunately, they don't let you explore the village in the demo, which is kind of disappointing because I think it looks really neat. But I'll see. I'll try to get the camera to go over so you can see what it is. They're just telling us to go to the incubator type of cat here, which is where you can hatch your eggs. But uh, this is the village. It's very colorful, lots of monster themed um, goods and carpentry and some really cool craft ideas. I think if you just want to make some woodwork of like Kuropeko, they had one of those at TGS, which is pretty cool. We go ahead and talk to this cat and that will allow you to hatch your eggs. So we have this one and that one. Let's go for... Mm, which one first? I oh, will go for the left one first. Let's see what we get. Oh no, a bullfango. <laughs> How many people actually want to pet bullfango? Not me. Okay, let's see if we had better luck here. Yeah, baby, the popo. So this is a rare example of kind of like a small monster that you can get. I wonder if it's going to be like a gag, like once you level up to max or something, it can be like the most powerful monster in the game or something like that. I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, they are Japanese game developers and a lot of games have jokes like that. Okay, so now they're saying now that we have a full party, we should be able to take on the Kezu. Um, that video is just saying, leave it to us. Let's go kick that Kezu's butt. Okay, and then it's just going to transition us right to the bottom of a cave. You can tell that they kind of rushed to get the demo out, but you know what? I'll take a rush demo more than no demo, so I'm not going to complain. 
So here you want to go and change your monster now before you go forward because the moment you step down there, it's going to initiate the cutscene. I'm going to switch to Popo because Popo is my boy. In Cleveland, Ohio, we call the police the Popo. At least it was when I lived there 14 years ago. <laughs> Uh oh, I know what that is. Slobber! It's a giant. Uh, oh, I can't say that. I'm a family friendly channel. Okay, let's check out this hunt in its entirety. One of the cool features that you can do here as you're seeing is you can zip ahead and fast forward a hunt by three times speed. This will also cut out a lot of the big animations like your specials or anything like that. So if you want to just plow through and level up, I think you can do it without much stress, which is really nice. Go ahead and put a bomb. I want to see what that does. <laughs> That's so cool. Now you do have two target points that you can do on Kezu. One is the head and one is the body. If you do the head and then you break it, I think it limits the amount of moves you can do. Go, Popo, go, 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 go. That's right. Don't mess with the Popo, man. Um, and if you break the head, then it creates more opportunities and limits the attacks that it can do. Um, the first time that you fight a monster, it doesn't tell you the HP, or it doesn't show you the gauge, but after you've hunted it a first time, then you'll see it any other consecutive time, which is really good. I guess what they wanted to do is have sort of like a moment of suspense, uh, when you first encounter a monster or a boss and you have no idea if it's about to die or not. Put the smack down. Electric breath. For the most part, I think this game is going to be more than easy enough, I think, to play for an importer. That being said, they do talk a lot about the story in this, um, so you're not going to get any of that if you can't read Japanese. But if you're a student of Japanese, if you've noticed, above all the kanji, they have the hiragana. So I think it's going to be really great for students in Japanese and younger kids. Now, granted, like some of these things, they don't have the furigana, but I think if you know the context, you'll be fine. Okay, here we go. The Popo special. It's weak as all get out, but I'm going to do it anyways. <laughs> Let's see if we can topple him or not. Go, Popo! Go, 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 go! No! <laughs> dumb, dumb Popo. That's a heavy Popo, man. Oof. Yeah, he's falling over. Uh, he's falling over <laughs> and now it's up to the player to to whoop on the butts why both of these monsters lay on the ground like idiots <laughs> it's a good time to use bombs I guess or buff or heal or whatever you want to do lay a trap ooh he dropped an item nice there we go Popa's up his is back up they're all back in the hunt. So if you notice that fire damage, that happens for three turns after you do a bomb, which is really nice. Go ahead and call out a different monster here. Come on, Bullfango. Gotta use my new boys. So immediately Bullfango for going for the speed. I'm gonna join him here. We didn't get the combination one, oh well, but look at that. The paralysis on my horn has came through at the right moment. Go, 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 go! That's my Fango. Oh, and we killed Kezu. So that's all it is. Um, the demo itself, it only takes maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes to play through if you're not exploring, but exploring is a lot of fun. When you restart the game, you have a chance to gain a rare cave, which is pretty fun. So I think the idea is just to replay it a few times and have, uh, and just enjoy the game, I think. And, um, I'll show off the tournament mode in another video. The tournament is really cool. It sort of plays like Dragon Quest Monsters in a way, um, but I really like it. Yay, you've cleared the demo version. Good job, Ryder. And now a special message. I really like Nabidu. Nabidu is cute. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the look at this demo. I hope if you have a Japanese 3DS that you're able to check it out. And if not, please look forward to my full playthrough when the game comes out. Until next time, happy hunting.